Hi there, and welcome to the Kingdom Sexuality Podcast. We're Paris and Alana, friends who have a heart for intimacy and long to uncover God's truth and design for sexual freedom within marriage. Welcome here. So I have to say, <laughs> talking about getting out of sexual slumps or, you know, a dry spell or whatever, um, it's pretty convicting. <laughs> I feel like... It's true. <laughs> there's never, I I mean, there's times obviously when you're like in a groove and things are going really well, mm-hmm. but I feel like there's these seasons just come and go so frequently. At least it feels like in my life, like I feel like there's so much going on right. between different things and seasons that it just, yes. just please know that Paris and I, or at least for myself, not immune to dry spells or mm-hmm. sexual slumps just because we talk about sex so often. And if anything, I feel like we've talked about this before, Paris, but I feel like the enemy would use that to make it even more of a battle for us. Would you agree with that? Oh, a hundred percent. Like, I know we've mentioned this briefly in some past episodes, but since God really started this ministry, um, this has definitely been a huge area of attack. And I mean, it's no wonder why, right? Like, this is a huge area of attack anyways. But then being in ministry with it, it was like, (laughs) that just leveled up. (laughs) Yeah, I, you know, I can remember when we started and I was like, man, like Jeff and I have just been out of sync. Like, have you found that too? And you're like, oh my gosh, we were feeling mm-hmm. the same thing. It was like, oh man. So it was like, wow, yes. we need to be, just like such a good reminder to be praying for oh, yourself, for, for sure. your marriage, for your friends, marriages, things like that, yes. to have people to come around you. And yeah, so anyways, it's definitely worth praying over for sure. Oh, absolutely. Big time. So going into this. And thinking about sexual slumps, I was curious. Mm -hmm. um, So I Googled how often the average couple has sex. Mm -hmm. So it turns out it's about 54 times a year. So basically comes out to about once a week. Right. Um, Which not that you should be like comparing or basing your sex life off what, you know, the average of the world is doing. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Because that's definitely a conversation you need to have with your spouse. But I thought it was really interesting. um, Yes. Because I just, I didn't actually... I didn't actually know that. <laughs> I was just curious. Me either. This is also news to me. Yeah. So, but that being said, like, it is very common for couples to go through seasons where they have sex left often, less often. So, things yes. like weeks or months with no yes. sex. Yes. And for so many reasons. And I, I think yes. it's important to also differentiate, you know, actually making a priority in comparative in comparison to just not – um, because there is legitimate reasons for having, like you said, weeks or months with no intimacy sexually because of job, different job postings or um, pregnancy and postpartum yeah. or any kind of health conditions or whatever it may be, you know, surgeries, just totally. stressful, stressful season of life or moves. And that is, that happens, you know, and I think it's important yeah. to not feel guilty about it because I think there's a surprising amount of people out there that feel so sickly guilty about it Mm -hmm. and they're like what's wrong with us why don't we have a sex drive right now or like what's going on or whatever or you just feel bad for the season you're in it's like no like we do go through these things and it's okay but that's why Alana and I are doing this Alana put together some really really good pieces of advice for going through these seasons to help get us on the other side of it yeah and and it's interesting too because like I don't know if I necessarily knew this before I got married. Like I don't know oh, if I necessarily <laughs> I never even thought it was a thing. You just like right? oh, you're just gonna have sex all the time. It's like, oh actually not. There is yeah. definitely seasons. Totally. So maybe if you're dating or engaged or a newlywed, this is complete news to you. Or maybe you're mm-hmm. married and this just doesn't really happen for you. Right. And that's great. Like yes. maybe you just do it on the regular and you're good to go and that's totally yes. great. Mm-hmm. But like I said, if this is something you are going through, please know that you are not alone. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure. And just because you are in a bit of a slump doesn't necessarily mean there's huge cause for concern. So these seasons, like Paris already said, like they come and go, but they mm-hmm. give you an opportunity to chat about your intimate life and you know make yes. a game plan, figure out what to do going forwards. Okay, so Paris... Mm-hmm. I was doing some reading while I was planning this episode. Have you heard of yes. the seven-year itch? I have never heard of this, and I'm excited to know more about this. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> I guess it's named that because typically around year seven is when mm-hmm. people, like, of their marriage, 
couples are having kids, you know, or money is tight, careers are starting, there's right. stresses of that and mm-hmm. things are piling on, leaving couples really drained for and leaving time for like any and all romance. Right. So would you say that you guys had that in your year seven? Year seven, actually, this is so ironic. I'm sitting here like, how did you know this? <laughs> Year what? seven was was our hardest year, and that was wow. actually a year ago. Um, I found that we just went through a massive amount of different transitions and seasons throughout that year. So, mm-hmm. like careers just taking different paths, or things you know exponentially growing or diminishing. Um, COVID in in the midst of all of it, like so much right. happened last year in our lives. Yeah. I mean, for those of you who know. Neil and I are follow us. We are full time farmers and we started our farm from scratch. There's a whole story behind that. Um, But it was just a lot. And that was last year. (laughs) So it was a massive year for us. And absolutely, we felt the strain of it in our sexual aspect of marriage for sure. And I definitely felt like I was kind of a deadbeat in so many seasons of last year. And I really struggled with that um, mm-hmm. and had to get on top of my mindset all the time. And just like you said, Alana, earlier, like we need to be praying over our marriage. And then, mm-hmm. of course, this is when we started this ministry last year. And so right. I was always aware of this and is constantly bringing, you know, the strains and the stresses of that year before the Lord and how it was really taking a toll on the sexuality side of our marriage and bringing that before Neil too. And we had so many conversations. So throughout it all, despite it being a really hard year, um, we definitely grew closer by leaps and bounds that we ever have in years previous, which I think was really, really cool because we really prioritize the conversations and Mm -hmm. so yeah I think that is totally a thing it was totally a thing for us yeah no it's so interesting I was trying to think about it and and think if if that was kind of us too and and I think I don't know if it was exactly around year seven but you know when we when we moved when we bought our new house when we like Jeff got a new job it was just like a combination of all these things things. happening right and yeah, and so I remember just, you know, the stress is high. Yes. Life is so insanely busy. Theo is mm-hmm. still small. So mm-hmm. I don't know if that was year seven or maybe just about, like, yes. our tail end of year six. Um, But, yeah, no, I remember it being, like, I don't – it wasn't, like, a year of it being difficult or anything like that, but I remember certain mm-hmm. months it was just – Yeah, and yeah, that's just the same for me. Just having to really prioritize, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was within that, yeah, and actually if we go back a little bit further, it was that tail end of year six into year seven that there was just massive seasons of a lot of, we were just on the struggle bus, like, Mm -hmm. yeah, stress takes a huge toll on things when you are under a load of it, you know? Yeah. And that was a lot of last year, for sure. Yeah. And I feel like we have talked about this topic kind of before. I don't know mm-hmm. if we've gone necessarily like in depth. I feel like we haven't done an entire episode devoted yeah. to it. But at the same time, I was like, it doesn't really hurt to to cover it again. Plus, if we were to do a poll of like who who experiences this in their marriage, like I feel Probably like the it majority would be, of us, right? <laughs> so Let's be it doesn't honest. hurt. <laughs> no, so exactly. Yeah. yeah. So then I thought it'd be nice to just get into some just three simple tips that could um yeah help you get out of that sexual slump or like go towards finding a way out getting of it. resolution for it absolutely yeah. yeah so did you want to take the first one there Paris yes I will take it so number one which is funny because I just said this is have the conversation that's that was a huge wake-up call for Neil and I in the past year and a half um from of our marriage and we're like we need to we need to really be having intentional conversations about the nitty-gritty you know like Mm -hmm. we have always been very good with our communication and and conversation and prioritizing each other in our lives but there is a point where you just don't go deeper because you're like oh maybe it just feels really uncomfortable so when you're talking about actual sex and 
all of the vastness within that topic. It can get really uncomfortable. But that's where we're saying have the conversation. This is huge, right? Mm-hmm. Um, Elena, she, you put up some really, really good ideas here. Like we should be asking our spouse, how often would you like to have sex every week? You know, is it every week? What's practical ways we could have sex more often? What kind of things really get your gears going? How can I intentionally love you? Knowing your love languages, all of these things. It's so important to have these conversations and actually go deep within them because how are you going to ultimately resolve things if you don't get to the root of what's going on for both of you as a married couple, right? Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Um, and even having conversations to chat about what, why do you think we're experiencing what we're experiencing right now? Like, why do you think we're kind of just at this dead end in terms of sexuality goes? How can we get past this? Um, it's so funny how you're thinking that exact thing, but having that actual conversation never seems to come about. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, You'll be like it can sitting be there hard. wondering, yes, because it is, because it's such a vulnerable state to be in. Mm-hmm. And I think it takes a lot because it also takes it takes our pride. <laughs> yeah, it knocks it knocks us out because you know you have to get humble to talk about things and admit a lot of times like yeah I've not been dealing with my stress well and it's affecting you and that's why we're not as intimate as we should be because of what, how I've been feeling how I've not been dealing with it you know like those mm-hmm. are hard things to admit and to say it's actually even totally. hard just to get honest about yourself with that let alone your spouse you yeah. know. Mm -hmm. So pinpointing those stressors in your life is a huge place to start. Um, It's just just a big thing. And like I said, it's something we'll often not talk about, but it's the biggest question on our mind. So we need to be talking about these things together, you know, and absolutely bring it before the Lord as well and asking him to reveal to you, okay, like what exactly is going on? Like what is the root issues here? How can you transform me through this, Lord? You know, and really getting serious with the Lord with this too because it is a heart matter. It, it ultimately is, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I think too, even like, I don't know, for us, the way that comes about, it's like, oh, we should probably have sex tonight. And it's like, yeah, it's been a while. Yeah. I wonder why. Like, why yeah, do you, for like, sure. Why do you think that is? Like, I feel like it's just really like, yes, it can be like where you have to like kind of swallow your pride and instead of just mm-hmm. like thinking about it as you're lying in bed, then to actually yeah. say it. But yeah. there's also like, you can also somehow bring it up casually in a sense too and be like, hey, <laughs> let's just talk about it. Yeah, um, for sure. Just to try and take the pressure off. But yes, it is a very when you're like very in your head about it, it can seem really overwhelming. Yes, absolutely. And I think another good point, um, this is something we learned early on in our marriage is there's definitely a way to talk about sensitive topics and to not talk about sensitive topics. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if you're like, okay, you haven't or, you know, we never or this always, those things are just a hard no. When yeah. coming to your spouse about something that is, is a potentially very sensitive topic and something that is going to require a lot of vulnerability, it's huge to just get on a playing field that is equal and to pray that even over yourself and your spouse beforehand um, when you have the conversation and just come into it like, I've always found a really great way to come into it is just being so honest about how I feel about Neil and being like, I really miss you. You know, like it's mm. been really rough lately and I really miss you. How can we, how can we fix this? What can we do to <clears throat> overcome X, Y, and Z, right? Yeah. And coming in as a team instead of a you and a me, you know? Yeah. All right. So tip number two um, is to up the connection. So when life gets really busy, the days are long, it can be easy to feel like your spouse simply just becomes your roommate. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. You're doing life together, shoulder to shoulder, but yeah, not there's no so face often to face. face to face. <laughs> exactly. <gasps> or if you're, you know, in busy parenting mode, you feel stuck in like mom and dad yeah. mode and not necessarily husband and wife. Right. Yes. Yes. So thinking about this, I was trying to figure out how, um, how to intentionally fuel that like love and desire part of the marriage daily. Yeah. For sure. So whether it's like, you know, instead of just the quick like, 
peck good morning or you know goodbye before work you know make me slightly romantic you know draw mm-hmm. out the hugs mm-hmm. leave notes on the mirror smack your husband's butt when he walks by oh you know like yes send him a text filled with the reminders of how you still have like the hots for him and you know like yeah. Doing simple things doesn't like it doesn't take much. It's just, just making that a priority on your mind, really. Yeah. Right? It's like getting that gear in play. I love that. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be this big fancy planned extravagant date night that happens weekly. Although it could be. Um mm-hmm. I know I have I know people who just they love to go on date nights. So they, they just do that together. Yes. And I'm I'm like, man, that sounds fantastic. Um, but is that you know, realistic for all of us. Yeah, no. find like, something that's <laughs> realistic for you. Yeah. Yeah, yes. going on these, like, expensive dates, while maybe, you know, that sounds nice for one date, it could get expensive. And sometimes, yeah, right. it's just unrealistic for you. So just yeah. find ways that works for you and your spouse to connect. But, like, sim- like simply you can keep it keep it simple and intentional, mm-hmm. right? Yes. Keywords. And, yeah, yeah. And something I was thinking too when I was trying to think of like, okay, how could you, you know, up the connection Mm -hmm. in your marriage? And something I was thinking of was to, I think we've kind of used, talked about this before, was um, using your senses, right? Like doing something different you haven't done before, you know, giving each other like full body massages, you know, feeding each other food or fruit in bed, using Mm -hmm. chocolate sauce and whipped cream, whatever. So like just thinking a bit out of the box and even though it might feel like goofy or awkward it could be super fun to help just like bring like the fun in to build a connection yes I was just gonna say that laughing together is such a miracle worker Mm -hmm. like having fun and finding those fun points in your marriage again where you're bringing that connection through that through laughing and just enjoying each other's presence is a huge deal and that often leads to so much more Like, don't downplay that. That's important. Yeah, Yeah, totally. I know. It's like, think of, you know, find something and cover your husband's eyes or something. And then you're like, I'm going to kiss you somewhere and you won't know where, right? Like, thinking of other senses too or playing music and things like that. I think it can be a fun fun way to just switch things up. Yeah. Absolutely. Exactly. I love that. Okay, and then the third tip we have for you guys is make intimacy a priority. We kind of said this already, Um, but look at your schedules as they are. Maybe it's normal for you guys. Maybe evenings are kids' time. You know, you're you're connecting as a family, and it's all about the kiddos, which is awesome, but also punch in time there for you guys as a couple. You're a husband and a wife before your parents, and I find a lot of us – We've talked about this. We've talked about motherhood and losing ourselves in motherhood. We are a a couple before we're anything else, right? So -hmm. it's important to continue that mind frame. You know, if if you're somebody that maybe works from home and it's easy to slip away in the evenings because your spouse is home and you can get more work done. I'm actually talking about me right now. Uh, You need to stop that. (laughs) And spend time with your spouse. Spend time with them. You know, make that evening about them. Um, Setting aside a couple hours before bedtime, you know, where you're together instead of watching TV or a movie or reading a book or whatever is your jam. You know what I'm saying? Um, Put the intimacy back into your evenings. It doesn't always have to be sex, you guys. But continuing to fuel that intimacy and the romance in your marriage and the connection is such a big deal yeah oh yeah completely and it's so convicting it's like oh man yeah Yeah, I know I was like no I'm definitely like (laughs) more inclined to like watch Netflix and be on my phone than (laughs) than plan a snuggle sesh with my husband every night or whatever which that's the thing it doesn't have to be every night but just to be intentional but more often than not is the thing right yeah exactly yeah no, for sure. Just the setting aside the time and to actually do something together. Yes. Yeah, mm-hmm. big time. But thinking about this too, I had seen the other day on Instagram. I'm pretty sure. I, I can't really remember where. But it said that the average cu- married couple only talks for about four minutes a day. 
Okay, I, I'm having a really hard time envisioning that. Me and Neil right? are talkers, so me and Neil are talkers. Like I said, we've always been really good at conversation and connection that way, and so that's that's crazy to me. I I don't know. I don't. But know. that Maybe is very it's sad. not true. Maybe You're it's not true. praying it's not true. But also, <laughs> I'm not gonna. I'm I'm saying this in the least judgmental way as possible. The, I can also see it. I can yeah. also see how that is a thing, and that's very heartbreaking. Yeah. Well, I mean, really, it's like, say, you know, you go to work, your husband goes to work, or you're, you know, whatever, or you were with the yeah. kids, and he comes home from work, and you're in kid zone, and mm-hmm. bedtime mode, and then you're on your phones, or you're watching mm-hmm. a show, or, like, mm-hmm. days can slip away, like, and the thing is, too, I was thinking about it, it's like, well, yeah, no wonder people would be having a hard time connecting physically when you haven't been connecting emotionally. Oh, exactly. That's the last thing on your brain. If yeah. you're not connected you know, on that kind of level, it's just, you know, the roommate level and you just go a little mm-hmm. bit further to the connection level. Like, the intimacy level is not going to exist if you're at roommate playing field. Like, not at yeah. all. Yeah. No. So it's just, like, the importance of, you know, setting aside time to talk and snuggle and connect. And mm-hmm. and something that's been helpful for us, too, is we, have, we got um, a marriage journal. And... Mm-hmm. Um, so we gave one of these away for to someone who reviewed the podcast as well. So, but I got one as well, and um, it's been so great. So every Sunday, uh, we have an alarm in our phone, and you just mm-hmm. go through these questions. How fun! You know, okay, I can't what wait. Brought you I need joy to this get week. This. Yeah, yeah. Um, what was hard this week? You know, mm-hmm. is there anything we need to confess to each other? Um, it keeps you accountable. Yeah, and it's a I good love it. and it. It almost can be a bit repetitive because it's the same, mostly like the same questions right. every week. But right. also, it, there's it's different every week, and just a nice His life like, is different every week. Totally, and a nice yeah. way to just connect and and think about it like marriage wise. And right. anyways, so I think that's a really a great way to. Um, I can maybe tag them in the show notes or put yes. the link to um to their website. But that's a, good idea. a great way to just making your marriage a priority too not necessarily intimacy but just straight up like your marriage because I mean Mm -hmm. that's where you start (laughs) I guess Mm -hmm. yeah 100 um, percent and thinking about it too like marriage is a marathon (laughs) it's not a sprint right and so is sex (laughs) yeah (laughs) everything everything I feel like that was such a theme this week um on our on our Instagram page is just sharing that Everything is a journey. Everything takes time. It takes practice. It takes effort and intentionality. Um, It's not some kind of sprint. You get there and it's done. Like it is a continually ebbing and flowing journey. And that's so important to remember. Yeah. I feel like when we were dating and stuff, it seemed like marriage was the finish line. Oh, for sure. I think so many of us have that (laughs) – subconsciously set in our brains yeah it's like you're just trying to get to marriage you're trying to get there you're trying to get there and then you yeah. get there and you're like Woo-hoo. No one. oh wait yeah. <laughs> but then so much complacency sets in and it's just like you're not you're not set up to start on a good foot you know what i'm no. saying like yeah and that's not awesome no no so using these seasons um to just build each other up, you know, like you had mentioned earlier, Paris, you know, to pursue God in this and, and mm-hmm. pursuing each other in this and taking it as an opportunity to have these important conversations about your sex life. Like, yeah, I feel like we talk about it all the time, but I, I still, I still know it's hard to do. And I, I still yes. know we all need reminders. Yes. <laughs> so we'll just keep saying it. <laughs> yeah, we will. Um, and yeah, like we had said earlier, just to be praying over your marriage during this time, because mm-hmm. Seasons of sexual, you know, ruts or slumps, you know, can be really discouraging when you're in them. Yes. But our prayer for you is that you'll come through these seasons even stronger and more prepared for what's ahead. Hey friends, thank you so much for hanging out with us as we dive deeper into meaningful, godly intimacy, tackle the hard questions, and embrace truth while we're at it. We're also on Instagram at Kingdom Sexuality. You'll find our Instagram handle below in the show notes where you'll also see any other resource links we may have mentioned in today's episode. 
As always, our hearts are to cultivate deep community and freedom with you guys. And we cannot wait to continue this journey alongside you. We'll see you in the next episode.